Premium quality football shirts at an extremely affordable price. Sound good? If so, check out the sponsor of today's video, jerseyfifa.com. You can see that I've sent these some shirts and they really are top quality. So make sure to click the link in the description to go find a shirt for yourself or perhaps as a gift for someone else. And you can now use code jerseyfifa at checkout for 10% off your order. That's code jerseyfifa at checkout for 10% off your order. I really do recommend their products, so go take a look. Now let's get into the analysis. So if we rewind to around 18 months ago, Mikel Arteta found himself under a lot of pressure at Arsenal with a large portion of the fan base asking for the ball to take action and sack him, but obviously as we know that didn't happen. Instead they chose to go in the complete opposite direction, and instead of sacking Arteta they decided to back him in a few different ways, and if I'm being completely honest it's been quite refreshing to see a manager backed in this way. To an extent Arsenal have been rewarded, this past season Arsenal have definitely improved and I do think there are reasons for Arsenal fans to be optimistic moving forward, and they should believe that they can take that next step as a football club. Ultimately, that next step for Arsenal is to finally make it back into the top four. They came so close this season, but they fell flat on their face at the last few hurdles, so they just missed out, but I think it's still been a fairly positive season. So today I want to take a look at how Arsenal were able to create these positive moments this year. So we are of course going to try and break down the tactics that Arteta has used this season, which has seen Arsenal improving so much. So the first thing Arsenal done at the start of the season was they financially backed Arteta and allowed him to make a few signings with one being Aaron Ramsdale, who was brought into the club to become the new number one goalkeeper at Arsenal. I will be honest, I personally was a little bit unsure about this move, but Ramsdale has proven me wrong because he's been one of the best goalkeepers in the Premier League this season, with his distribution in particular being extremely impressive this year. Arsenal have obviously looked to build around Ramsdale's confidence on the ball, so they've asked the centre-backs to split slightly wider either side of the keeper, in order to provide better passing angles for the ball to be played out from the back. Again, this was helped by the fact that Arsenal strengthened in these areas at the start of the season. Ben White was extremely expensive, but he has certainly adapted well, and I certainly think that he has improved the Arsenal defence this season. Again, one of the most important things has been his ability on the ball. Ben White is a player that is extremely comfortable with the ball at his feet, and that has been absolutely crucial to the way that Arsenal have looked to play this season. Another good thing for Arsenal is that they were able to start the same centre-back pairing for most of the season until the final few weeks, and the partnership between Gabriel and Ben White has certainly helped Arsenal to grow as the season has progressed. With the defenders being extremely confident on the ball, it's allowed Arsenal to dominate possession, and they started the season using a 3-2 shape in the middle third, with Tomiyasu taking up a deeper position alongside the defenders. Tomiyasu was another one of the players brought into the club last summer, and it has looked like a brilliant bit of business, thanks to his ability and versatility in possession, allowing him to play this tucked in position alongside the two centre-backs. As a result, this has then allowed Partey and Xhaka to take control in the middle third, or at least when the two of them have been fit and when they have been available, the two of them have had a good season, controlling the play for large periods for Arsenal. Despite some success, Arteta still chose to change the shape slightly, as he pushed Tomiyasu slightly further forward to play alongside the midfield, whilst he and he done the same from the other side, creating this new 2-3 shape. One of the benefits of this change in shape was that it now allowed Xhaka to play with greater freedom in the midfield, giving him the licence to push slightly further up the pitch and into the final third in order to support the attack. As a result, Odegaard has been given a bit of freedom to roam about the pitch, and he's often looked to drop deeper on the right-hand side of the midfield three, allowing him to receive the ball in a little bit of a half-space on the right. For me, Odegaard has been one of Arsenal's most impressive players this season, and whilst he hasn't come up with too many goal contributions, we can still see that his stats and performances have been very impressive for large parts of this year. Moving forward, Odegaard is probably a player that Arsenal need to build around. His technical ability on the ball is a level ahead of most of this Arsenal squad, and at times that has shown this season, this has really dictated certain games. Odegaard and the rest of the midfielders have also been helped by the fact that Lacazette has regularly dropped quite deep, and despite starting the match up front, he actually spent most of his time this year dropping into the midfield to help out. As a result of playing deeper, Lacazette probably hasn't got himself enough goal contributions this season, and that has led to a lot of criticism. But personally, I do still think that he's been absolutely crucial to how Arsenal have played. Lacazette's deeper positioning, as well as the movement of Xhaka and Odegaard, has allowed Arsenal to create a diamond in the middle third of the pitch, allowing them to numerically outnumber most of the teams that they have faced. 
As a result of this narrow play, the two Arsenal wingers have been crucial as well, and they've often been asked to play extremely high and wide, making sure to constantly stretch the pitch and provide the width for the Arsenal attack. On the left it has been Martinelli providing the width for most of the season, and he really has grown as a player this year, showcasing his dribbling ability time and time again, and he has produced some really really good performances out wide. The same can be said for Bukayo Saka over on the right hand side of the attack as well, and again Saka has had a brilliant season, holding the width for his side and beating his opponent time and time again with his brilliant dribbling ability. Saka's numbers look quite impressive as well, especially when we look at his FB ref report, and we can see that he ranks in the 81st percentile for progressive carries, which is impressive when you consider some of the other ball carriers in Europe. Whilst this has been Arsenal's main attacking system for most of the season, Arteta has also shown some tactical flexibility as well, especially as the season has progressed towards the latter stages, when we continue to see some small tweaks. With Xhaka and Tierney in particular being really important to the way that Arsenal have rotated this season, and that's largely down to their ability to either hold a deep position or their ability to push into the attacking third. The way this has worked is we've occasionally seen Xhaka holding a slightly deeper position in the centre of the pitch, and as a result this has allowed Tierney to push forward, either into a narrow position or on the overlap. As a result of these interchanges, the Arsenal forwards have been given a pretty good amount of attacking freedom, especially in the final third of the pitch, where they've been able to swap positions to try and cause trouble for the opposition defence. This has also been helped by Arteta's ability to turn to his bench for a slightly different option, with Smith Rowe in particular providing great squad depth, allowing Arsenal to bring something slightly different to their attacking unit. The same can be said for Nketiah as well, he hasn't played too much during the season in general, but over the last couple of months he has played a much bigger role, and he did get himself and his side some important goals towards the end of the season. Unfortunately for Arsenal they don't really have as much squad depth across the rest of the pitch, and as a result they have been hit hard whenever key players have picked up injuries, and there is quite a drop in the standard outside that first 11. Despite this, the players coming in have still done a good job, with both Rob Holding and El Elneny playing big roles in the team towards the end of the season, when they both came into the team and done a reasonably good job, filling in for the others. These injuries will be a concern for Arteta. Arsenal haven't had many games at all this season, yet they've still been plagued by injuries, so I do worry about how the squad will cope next season with more games in European football. Especially when you consider how Arsenal have played this season as well. In most games they've played with a high intensity, looking to press the opposition nice and high up the pitch in an attempt to try and win the ball back as quickly as possible. To be fair, when Arsenal have won the ball back they have looked deadly. They're not the greatest team, but when they win the ball back and look to transition quickly, they have looked lethal all season long, with explosiveness in the attack. That's obviously been one of the benefits of using such a young squad. These young players have brought a great level of energy and enthusiasm to the team, both in and out of possession, whilst they have also provided a lot of quality. However, for all the positives of a young team, there have been some problems as well, and at times this side has clearly lacked a little bit of experience and perhaps the dark art of the game that a team needs for any real top, top success. This was probably shown more than ever towards the end of the season when the pressure was really on Arsenal, and I hate to say it, but the team did begin to crumble a little bit, and the team lacked that streetwise nature that the team needed. Another issue for Arsenal this season has just been an inability to break down some of the smaller teams who sit deeper, and in these sort of games, the team has probably just lacked that bit of creativity that they've needed from the midfield areas. They've also lacked a goal scorer as well, for all the good work from Lacazette this season, he hasn't scored enough goals for this Arsenal team, and the side has really lacked a traditional number 9 that can put the ball in the back of the net. I do think that Arteta will look to address this in the summer. A goal scorer is one of the things that Arsenal need to go to the next level, whilst they also need an extra bit of quality in the midfield if they really want to improve further. Obviously, we have all started to see the rumours already, with Tielemans, for example, getting linked with a move this summer. And to be fair, on face value, it does look like it could be quite a good move for both Arsenal and Tielemans to make. The same could be said for Gabriel Jesus as well, he is obviously another player that has been linked with a transfer over to North London, and I do think that he would provide something slightly different for this Arsenal team that they are currently lacking. I do think that it's a big summer coming up for this Arsenal side, which is exactly why I'll be doing a video soon where I'll look at some players that they should sign, so make sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you don't miss that video. 
But just to wrap up this season, I do think that Arsenal have had a pretty good year. There's certainly been improvements from previous years and are heading in the right direction. But now it's time for them to take the next step. So let me know how you think they can do that in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll of course see you in the next one.